Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of Friday Night Force. Here we have a pretty sweet matchup today. Uh, I told Sean that I was going to record his video for this evening. Uh, it turned out he was playing against Gerds this round, so we have a nice little Battle of Fates Friday Night duality here. Uh, looks like they're drawing their opening hands here. Gerds decides he wants to eat. Alright, and they reveal the rulers. Looks like Sean's playing Charlotte over here, and Gerds is playing Lumia. I have an idea of what he's playing, if you've seen our recent uh, Battle of Fates video. Uh, Sean's going to play his Regalia, because he's playing Rulers Memoria. And Scorn to see Ariza, Scorn, Lapis Darkstorm, Death Scythe, and a Melder. Uh, he's going to take the Ariza, it seems like the good choice there. Uh, we're probably going to see a return Scorn here. Takes the Tama, most likely, and he has a Charlotte's Protector in this deck because it's a Soul Hunt based deck and you can discard it to, to actually draw a card. And in this matchup, you're going to see Dark Storm uh, come into effect with that too. Uh, Sean's just going to go draw Go. Not much interaction up, and he didn't hit that second black in case he did draw a Dark Storm. So we're, he's going to get Dark Storm here, and you're probably going to see the Protector come into effect here. Uh, Alright, so he hits the Dark Storm, which Sean did draw, and he gets to draw off the Protector discard. So effectively a one for one on the Dark Storm. As you Tama. And a bow. So Sean's pretty protectively set up here. He's got a nice little setup against uh, stealth resonators if he wants if Gerds tries to set something early. So I think both players are in a decently neutral spot, but Sean's got good protection. Uh, Sean puts a set card down and passes. Uh, knowing Sean's list, this is probably a prison. Uh, Gerd's just Darkstorms here because it's the only discard in his hand, I assume. And it's the probably the best play because he had like a Melder and uh, some other things in his hand. Alright, and Sean's going to attack with Tama, and Gerds is going down to 38. Sean's going to judge here and trigger his Charlotte to draw four cards. Uh, Charlotte's trigger fills you up to five cards in hand, uh, and she'll gain you one life for each card you draw, too. So he's going to gain four off of that. Uh, fire off a Scorn to take that Melder that we knew was there, and he's got a Heavenly Gust and a Valentina's Reach in hand. Interesting setup. And then Sean plays the... Interesting... So Sean saw the Heavenly Gust in hand, but still played the bow into it. Even though he had another bow. Alright, so Gerd's just going to take the the discard with Valentina's reach. And Sean's going to get value off that protector again, and start gaining some life off of Charlotte. Both of these decks seem to be trying to approach a common goal of just grinding your opponent out and then winning incrementally. Sean's deck seems to be the more slow and methodical version. Gerd's is, seems to be a little bit more explosive on the back end with his stealth resonators. Uh, Sean's just chipping away at the moment. So Gerds is starting to set some Stealth Resonators here, and Sean goes to pop it with the bow, but he's just going to cast it anyway because that's fair. Uh, Gerds will trigger his Riza and go get a 
what I'm presuming to be a melder. And Heavenly Gust. So playing that second bow did end up biting Sean a little bit in the butt. Okay, so he went and got another Rizza and had it die to the bow. Okay. I guess the Melder would have died just as easily because he wasn't at low enough life. Sean's going to start returning some death scythes. Make sure all the beef. Uh, so he bumps his shard to a six and boops his Riza for the last two to finish it off for eight, and then hits him for two with Tama. So it goes, just says draw go. I'm guessing he's not in the best of situations right now. Just playing off the top and all of his stealth stuff being killed. Uh, Tama gets in there. Charlotte gets in there. Charlotte doesn't get in there. He gets, she gets stonewalled by the space time. Could have pumped for one damage. Death Scythe, but Soul Hunt there is interesting. Okay, so Gertz is going to respond with space time here to see another card in his hand. Uh, assumingly, he doesn't want to discard the card he has, so he wanted to find something that was better to pitch. Uh... There's a wince included to cycle out. And Gerd is going to go into judgment here. He's not going to exile Narla because Sean is a death scythe anyway, and for the same reason, he can't attack. So Sean's going to miss the Death Scythe here, and he thought Triple Space Time would get him there. Uh, so... Looks like Sean's just trying to get cards out of Gerd's hand. He did have a Death Scythe to discard as well, so not losing any value there. Just a simple one for one. He's going to play that second Death Scythe to set up for, I'm guessing, a final punch. And Gerd's just going to set a card and pass. Knowing he can't attack. So Sean has 14 on board. Gerd's at 16. Uh, 
Uh, Sean's just checking for space times here. Make sure that Charlotte's not going to get brick walled again. Uh, even though he has a space time engrave, uh, Gerd's is, Lumia is going to be a 12 12 here on the block, and he has wind secluded to stop the space time if he needs to. So Gerd's can block this safely. Uh, I don't know if he wants to. Yeah. He's going to pump once. Okay, maybe it wasn't safe. Never mind. Math. So he lost his Lumia. And goes to 14. There we go. So he clears the way for his, his other stealth resonator, which is probably a melder or something, uh, by playing that bow. It was good knowledge to know that you could get to that card to set it up. Uh, yep, Melder into his Tama. So, Gerds' Melder is going to get bounced here, and because it's not in standby, can't cast an instant speed. And what he did there was uh, he bounced the Melder before, like, with its trigger on the stack. And because there were no stealth resonators after the Melder was bounced, it, the Tama got minus zero, minus zero. Just to get a little chip in. But that's going to matter in this game. Putting him at four means that Charlotte is lethal even without the Death Scythes. So we got a Melder in hand. I don't know. Space time for that... In Yarla Thotep, which can just get bounced, and that is three damage on board right now. So he goes to one here, and we'll see what he top decks. Oh, Sean has two more bows in hand. That seems like it's over. Yep, that's it. Alright. So, on to game two. Uh, Gertz is going to sideboard into a uh, Dark Alice here. Uh, and you can't see it because of the overlay but when I come back to readjust the camera you will see it um, and he's gonna lead off with a regalia uh, Sean's gonna follow suit and lead off with scorn which is nice take a Reza early he sees a black moonbeam he sees a wind secluded and a heavenly gust uh, all things that are gonna deal with his early judgmenting of Charlotte so he's got to be wary of those before he makes his move Uh, Gerds is just going to take the moment to use his excess mana to exile the Scorn there. It's a good play. And early win secluded, not bad. That means that he's safe to judgment early, even through a black moonbeam. And Sean being the discard pile is probably going to fall to that. Scorn hits another Riza. That's the nuts. So Sean is probably feeling really good right now that he's hitting really big hits on the scorns because in a, in a stealth deck you rarely are going to get that kind of hit uh gertz passes with this will up pretty good option just to exile things at the end of turn Yeah, eats the scorn after taking two. Not a bad trade-off. 
Uh, four will up, finds his stealth resonator. Now this is a pretty good board state for him because if this is a Riza, he's got an Apollo to return it to hand, putting him under the 20 life mark and also having two melders set. With the two will up as well, whatever he kills, it is a Riza, so Riza will trigger. Likely to set a another Riza here. Could be a Melder. I would set actually another Melder. That's not bad. You could walk. You could be walking into Bow. No, it's probably best to set a Riza. Because if you set a Melder here, you walk into Bow, and if you set a Riza here, you can just Apollo and trigger your other Riza to go get a Melder, and then you're below twenty anyway. So. Gust, that's a good pick off of the Nameless Mist. Uh, so that means that even though he didn't take the Black Moon Meme, that's likely proposing that uh, he's going to wait on the Wind Secluded setup before he walks into that Black Moon Beam. That or he has a Dark Storm. Uh, Gerd's just going to use that Floating 2 Will to eat two more things of Sean's, setting up for a Dark Alice later. And play a Schrodinger as well. Gertz is going to get his Resonator tapped again. Charlotte's Protector is going to town, making it just a bl one blue tap something rather than one blue and discard, because you you net one or you net you net lose zero. And he had the Dark Storm anyway, so yeah, taking the Heavenly Gust was not bad because that was the only instant speed way to disc to get a card out of his hand. So now he knows that Black Moon Boom is gone. He's probably looking to Judgment here. Ah, uh, yes. And I get to readjust the camera. Yep, so here's the Judgment. Uh, you're going to see him draw one, I believe, right? Two. So, go to 42. And... I don't know if a Judgment was the best call there, just because you now have no other play for the turn. But he does have the Regalia Suite, so that's nice. Uh, Kurtz is getting a big remove pile, though, for Dark Alice. I, be I believe he's he's over five at this point. Yeah, he had a Nameless Mist, Dark Storm, two Scorns, and uh, Nameless Mist, Dark Storm, two Scorns. Am I missing something? We'll find out. Uh... <laughs> so he, Gerds is not very good at rolling D6s, so there we go, D4. Alright, so he hit a mole, and Sean's going to just discard the Protector because that's pretty good. Uh, two wind secluded up. I don't think Sean's got much to deal with his J-Ruler at this point. Sean has probably three cards in his hand that draw another card. So it's it's likely that he's he's just contemplating his options on like what he might draw. So Gerd's just graciously takes a hit there because if his opponent will put him below 2,000 here, he, that means he probably has a Melder set. Might even just take the scout hit. I don't think he'll swing with the scout though. That's a pass. Yep, Gerds is 
eating everything he can with Dark Alice, as you should. I think he's at 9 now when I go to count. Uh, Gird's just going to pop all the one drops with the Dark Alice Judgment. And just say go. Oh, he, he God Zarted too. So, God Zart's probably going to come to play on this next turn, if I remember correctly. Uh, Sean's just thinking about his turn as much as he can before he cuts. For, all, for any of you uh, beginning players, uh, if you play a Charlotte deck that is, is revolving around card draw and judgmenting her early, you will get good at remembering your triggers really quickly. Because there are so many life gain triggers that you have to get. Uh, Sean's just going to go for an attack here, and this is probably where that Wall Partners Knight's going to play come into play because Charlotte is a 12 from the pump, and then a 20 or so Sean believes, but she is actually 18 power because of Wall Purchase Knight affecting J Resonators. Uh, so the Dark Alice at 19 toughness is going to stonewall this Charlotte, but Charlotte's got the biggest toughness ever, so she's not going to die either. Uh, looking, staring down two wins occluded tears is not really interactable. Uh, we're going to see an Alice's Scout die under the wall purchase night. And it's, Sean's going to try to space time and he's just going to get wins occluded. Uh, Sean actually misses here and draws off space time, but we caught it early so he just put it back. I uh, see a soul hunt here from Sean. Very good value coming out of that soul hunt. Uh, two, one of two things could happen there. He could have just opened up another Riza, which he did. Um, but I think that was probably an okay play. Actually, no, I think... Uh, So here in the background, I was trying to do math, but I think I was really dumb, and I did it wrong, because I'm looking at it now, and it's only 39 with two Melders and a Dark Alice, uh, because the Melders would have to either kill the Riza or force an Apollo Pop. Sean's going to set a card here. So that kind of ensures um, that one of the melders isn't going to pop here. Uh, this, I think, this is the turn that Gerd's top decks the Heavenly Gust. He's just gonna go draw go. He's gotta hold up blocks for that Charlotte. Yeah, so this is where he top deck the Heavenly Gust, because Sean's gonna go to tap his regalia here.
Okay. Okay, so he wants to trigger his melder here to get the Heavenly Gust. I think Sean forgot he had a prison set. Yeah, I think if Sean had triggered that prison on Melder, that would have been a different game. I, the, the Regalia would have still died to Gust, but that's one less Melder that you're going to have to deal with now, because he could have saved it with an Apollo in response, I believe. Interesting couple of lines there. Uh, Sean's going to be stonewalled again by the Dark Goss. Sean's just going to tap here to keep his Charlotte alive. And he's going to try to space time, and Gerds will respond to the ones included. Uh, that card's kind of out of sight, but that was a soul hunt there. Sean's just going to discard his other Dark Storm, which is pretty useless right now. And Gerds is going to discard his, or, uh, sacrifice, r banish, rather, his Riza. Uh, now Gurge is just setting up his next turn for, like, a kill. Um, so, he got bared there on the Melder to only deal four damage. It's not a bad play by Sean. Uh, but it looks like his options are running thin. Uh, Dark Owls is just really big and can block everything. Um, granted, she is she is uh, vulnerable to Black Moon Beam at this point. Yeah, that Valentina's reach is huge. So Gertz is going to go to five cards in hand. Sean's at one card. Uh, Gertz has a heat. A Melder set, uh, he's below 2,000 life, has another Melder and a Dark Alice on board that can block anything Sean puts out. So it's it's not looking good for Sean. Here's on his three, four cards in hand. Yeah, with the Horn, Dark Alice is now 21 to 23 uh, if he wants to tap it before on top with flying. Okay, so Sean kind of baits the Melder there. Uh, I think Gerds could have Apollo'd it in response to the prison, uh, but that's fine too. I, think, I don't think he cares because you just have a very large Dark Alice to come in at him with. Sean's going to get just baited in space time here. Alright, and Sean scoops it up. Uh, he sees that Gertz has lethal on board and without Charlotte to, there to block or at least threaten to keep Dark Alice back, he's just going to take the scoop up and go to game three. And Sean's just going to lead off with a cute little cutie patootie and a death scythe. Gerds is going to lead off with a regalia of his own. Into a nameless mist, so that's not bad. He's going to get rid of some of Sean's early removal. Good prison early is not bad either. Especially for resonators that always have enter triggers. Okay. And... 
Greg just takes the smart play and bows the, the Alice's scout early. Oh, <laughs> and it seems Sean has top decked a uh, another prison, which Bo Gertz is going to immediately bow. Goodness, it's just counters to counters here. Uh, when secluded goes down, that's pretty sweet. Death Death goes down. So Dark Alice is going to be pretty lethal soon. Next turn, Gertz might leave just three will up to exile and judgment. I know that's a decent play. Uh, a bow into a Ruler's Memoria here. Uh, and another Kitty Patuti. So Sean looks like he's running low on gas. I don't know if this is going to be a quick game or not. I would just pass with Gertz's hand. I don't know what his hand is, but I'll just pass. Yep. So there's a pass. Uh, he's likely exiling just three cards this turn and flipping. Uh, Sean's going to call his stone. And Nameless Mist. Um, he's going to see another Wind Secluded, two Remnant cards, and Darkstorm. Yeah, I think the wind secluded is the take there, because take. I, I, actually, I think the dark storm might be the take because you don't want him to start eating all of your stuff, uh, because the remnant cards are just are clearly the worst things to take there. Uh, that scout's gonna be met with a space time, which is not bad. Maybe it might have been the right play to leave the will up just to judgment. And Gerd's, Gerd's here on the uh, on the recording was declaring that there are Tamas in Sean's graveyard, uh, and there clearly were not, but it's okay. We love him anyway. Uh, and Gerd's just going to take the time out to eat another Alice's Scout before Sean has the will up to start activating Mole. Uh, Gerd's just going to use that excess will to eat as many cards as he can. Uh, looks like Dark Alice is ready to start going, but it's probably safer to to play play the large hand while you can. Uh, Sean is running low on resources here. Uh, he needs to start getting some resonators into the bin to start activating Mool. Uh, and just hope Gertz doesn't have booze. Uh, so it looks like Gertz just has the nuts here. And uh, Sean's going to flip his Charlotte. And in response to the draw trigger, it's going to get moonbeamed. And he's going to save my job as an editor. And I don't have to do it. more life total changes for this freaking Charlotte. Uh, Sean is going to scorn Gerds here, and he's going to see no takes. He's going to see a Charlotte's, a Apollo, and a Darkstorm. Uh, Sean's sitting on four cards. The Darkstorm would equalize the hand sizes, maybe, but if Sean is a Charlotte's protector, it's not going to. Uh, Gerd's just going to eat that one card, probably looking to Judgment this turn. There's the Dark Storm to equalize. Gets a Soul Hunt, probably the worst card to take there. Yep, and there's a the Protector. So they're both at three cards now, I believe. Or Gerd's at two cards after playing Regalia. Oh, three, never mind. So he elected not to judgment there. Probably just wants to get as many cards exiled as possible. And we have first blood this game. 
Gerd's going to take two from Tama. Some of the control matchups can be like this, but as much as the life totals uh, don't change, it's more the card advantage and disadvantage and just positional advantage that you're you're looking at. Um, for instance, Sean has a very defensive stance uh, where he has bows set up, he has death scythes to protect him from sweat, from fast stuff and little dudes getting in. And he also has Mool to kind of grind out the later game, uh, whereas Gerds is kind of stacking up his regalia and his protection for Dark Alice to make his flip that much more powerful. And the, game, the games tend to end in like a, a large swing rather than uh, incrementally like you would see an aggro matchup or a mid-range matchup. Uh, there's a little discrepancy here, but it's probably a good time to explain it. Uh, so, Sean went to remove a resonator from his graveyard with Mool to go get a token, uh, and Gerds was curious as if he could exile them with Dark Alice in response. Uh, but the thing is, it's the removing a resonator is part of the cost of activating Mool, uh, rather than the effect, so it happens as you put the ability on the chase. Uh, therefore, Dark Alice can't actually remove the card that Mool is removing. Uh, Dark Alice is going to flip naming zero, which is a, a valid number to name, because tokens do have a total cost of zero. Uh, and then immediately God's Art, which is probably just the best play, goes gets his Schrodinger. Uh, Gerds is looking pretty good right now. He's sitting on a Schrodinger, which is giving him Swiftness and, and Target Attack, which doesn't really... Swiftness of Flying, which doesn't really matter in the former, because the Death Scythe. Uh, but it is also giving him plus 5. So that's a 14-14 Dark Alice, making it 18 with his Regalia pumps, and then 22 if he wants to stack them to, on untap. So that's a 2-shot. That's plus four, so we see an 18-18 Dark Alice. Uh, he does have an Apollo in hand, so that could be flying 18-18 Dark Alice as well. Uh, and regardless, he, the only uh, relevant blocker I could see coming out here would be a mole token. Actually, no, because there's no resonators in his graveyard. Never, never mind. And there's a Val Reach just to discard his hand. So that's going to probably be... Oh, oh. He's going to draw cards. Okay, so that's a Vals for four to draw cards. Uh, we see a set and an Apollo. And he's going to trigger his Riza. But I don't think he's going to pay the life. It's not a bad play. You just want the resonator down to pressure his life total. Uh, Sean's going to go to space time here. And it will resolve. So we have a 9-9 a nine -nine Dark Alice. Now we have a 4-4 four -four Dark Alice. Sean's going to get to draw on cards, but it's going to die under the wall purchase night. Uh, and we see Sean doing the same with an Alice Scout, just having it die under the wall purchase night. It's not a bad idea because Gerds is out of ways to uh, remove resonators, but. Uh, there doesn't seem like there's many options to deal with this Dark Alice he's staring down. That's good. Well, actually, she might not be lethal due to the possibility of space time. Uh, 
Okay. So it looks like here Gertz had a gust in his hand, so there was nothing that Sean could do. Uh, even with the regalia up, even if he had like space times to maybe shrink the Dark Alice, there was nothing that was happening. Uh, so yeah, that was the that was a little matchup. Um, Charlotte's versus or Charlotte discard versus um, Dark Al or Dark Alice or Lumia Stealth rather, and um, yeah, it was a pretty fun matchup. It was our Friday nights, uh, Friday night force, and uh, have a good night, guys.